Okay, good afternoon everyone. It's Nick Petro at the National Weather Service in Raleigh on April 18, 3.30 p.m. with an update regarding the severe weather potential across central North Carolina that's expected on Friday, tomorrow. And I thought I'd first start off with this loop here showing uh, all the thunderstorm activity that's crossing the Mississippi River Valley, the lower Mississippi River Valley. You can see there's tornado watches and many tornado warnings in effect, um, severe thunderstorm warnings. So there's a lot of busy weather to our west, and that is the storm system that we are watching that will eventually move east and cross central North Carolina during the afternoon tomorrow. So let me go ahead and close this out and get into the slides again. Enhanced risk for severe storms on Friday. Uh, this is from the Storm Prediction Center that highlighting uh, all of central North Carolina, basically at much of North Carolina east of um, I-77 and the enhanced risk for severe thunderstorms. So uh, let's go ahead and, and move on through the slides. So this slide just basically depicts what we are expecting in terms of hazards. Wind, tornadoes, hail, lightning, and flooding. So every hazard is on the table. Timing-wise, we're thinking it could be as early as uh, Friday morning, and I'll, sh I'll elaborate a little bit on that here in a minute. And all of Central North Carolina is, is possible to see some of these uh, impacts here. Uh, in terms of tornadoes, um, you know, it says here tornadoes possible. We're not expecting an outbreak you know, like uh, April um, 16, 2011. We're not expecting anything like that. But, you know, could there be a few, you know, two or three tornadoes uh, touching down across our area? Sure, that's possible. Um, in fact, we have uh, on this next slide, we have the tornado risk elevated. But still, in these cases, the biggest hazard in terms of, you know, widespread damage pr production potential is from the straight line winds. And keep in mind that straight line winds can produce damage that looks like a tornado damage. OK, so don't assume just because a roof is blown off or a swath of trees is blown down that it was a tornado. OK, so just keep in mind that damaging straight line winds is what we are expecting in terms of the most uh, sort of prolific, if you will, type of hazard uh, or the most frequently, the most common type of damage with this event tomorrow. But Again, not not to say there won't be any tornadoes. There probably will be, you know, two, maybe three tornadoes. You know, with with April 16, 2011, there were 30 tornadoes across the state. You know, there were there were nine in central North Carolina alone. We're not expecting numbers like that, but still, even just one or two tornadoes can cause a lot of problems. So, you know, I don't want to minimize the tornado threat, saying it's not going to be like April 16, but we're just not. This is not the same type of setup as we had when we had 30 tornadoes in one day back in April 16, 2011, okay? So with uh, rotating storms, whether they produce tornado or not, they can produce large hail. So hail is a threat, flash flooding is a threat, and obviously lightning goes with those thunderstorms. Uh, again, I showed, I showed this earlier. We, we, um, we um, sent this out on, on its own. Um, you know, this was uh, this morning we sent this, and, and no change here. Really, all of central North Carolina is in that enhanced risk. Also, I wanted to point out, too, that due to recent heavy rains over the past week, rivers and streams are running high, soils are still wet, and, you know, uh, an inch or two of rain, some of, some places locally higher, uh, could give us a risk for flash flooding. So I would not be surprised if we have to issue, you know, a handful of flash flood warnings. You know, the typical low spots that have flooded before may flood again in terms of locally, uh, local flooding, the flash type flooding. All right. All right, so I think this is really probably the biggest addition to the so sl set of slides that we emailed out this morning. And, and I wanted to provide these simulations because there's really two camps of models in terms of the timing. Like, you know, that is, you know, when are these storms going to move in, move through? And, and there's really two batches of storms we're concerned about. We're, we're concerned first about um, this batch coming up from the south, out of South Carolina, early in the day. We're talking, you know, 8 a.m. and onward through the rest of the morning hours. Okay, so so this batch of storms we're going to be watching more than likely, and I'm talking this batch right here, also depicted in this other model right here on the right. And, and again, just to clarify, the, the, the models you see on the left is a faster moving, faster evolving model solution. The models you see on the right here are a slower evolving, uh, slower moving um, set of models. So anyway, this area of thunderstorm activity that I've got highlighted in, in the yellow uh, highlighter, that we're expecting to move up from out of South Carolina during the morning hours. You know, could that have severe, uh, you know, hazards and impacts? Possibly. 
possibly. I mean, it's it's early in the day, so there's not going to be as much heating. So just climatologically speaking, that first batch coming up across the Sand Hills region and, and the I-95 corridor is less likely to be severe just because of the time of the day. Uh, but would I completely rule out an isolated damaging wind gusts? Maybe even a, a very brief isolated tornado? No, I can't rule that out at this point. So, you know, there could be some severe weather with that initial batch during the morning hours on Friday tomorrow. All right, so let's jump ahead to the afternoon hours, 2 p.m. and 5 p.m. And here's where the really more notable differences in the models show up. The faster scenario on the left brings a line, a squall line, kind of like what I showed you that's occurring in the Mississippi River Valley right now. It brings that main event squall line through as early as 2 p.m. across the triad down toward Wadesboro. Whereas the slower scenario shown on the right at 2 p.m. still has the squall line west of I-77. That's a substantial time difference. When is it most likely to move in to the triad down to Wadesboro? Probably sometime in between you know, 2 and 5 p.m. And look at the bottom. You can see that the faster scenario has that squall line all the way to the triangle region by 5 p.m., whereas the slower scenario has that squall line, again, moving across the triad region by 5 p.m. So somewhere between 2 and 5 p.m., that squall line is going to move across the triad over toward the US-1 corridor. And then sometime around, or maybe just before 5, it'll affect the triangle region. Okay, and, and the main threat with this, uh, with these lines, if you will, are damaging straight line winds, heavy downpours, maybe some hail, heavy downpours, I think I already mentioned that, and maybe an embedded isolated tornado or two. Okay, so that's the afternoon hours. And then as we head through the evening hours, the models begin to catch up and, and are in better agreement, the, the faster versus a slower scenario, so that by evening hours, Seven, eight o'clock, you know, we're seeing the I-95 corridor being affected. And then the bulk of the severe weather, in fact, all of the severe weather will be east of I-95 and affecting the coastal portions of, of North Carolina during the late evening hour, say around 11 p.m. The stuff you see back, um, you know, during the late evening hours tomorrow, uh, this activity you see further west, this will be behind the main line. This This line, this main line, will you know, consume most of the energy in the atmosphere. So there really won't be much energy left for these showers that are lingering behind the main line. So once this main squall line moves through, then these lingering showers behind should be much weaker and just put some, just some um, heavy rain down at times. Okay, so uh, I'll email these slides out so you can, um, so you can you know, review these timing uh, slides again on your own, um, but let me just back up one more time. So there's 8 a.m. We've got the first batch coming through up from the south. Um, could this be have some severe impacts? Sure, but it'll be very isolated. The main severe impacts are expected with the squall line and these, um, you know, damaging winds, bowing segments, an isolated tornado or two, heavy down to pours that would produce flash flooding. That's expected during the afternoon hours. It could be as early as two across the triad or as late as five across the triad. Could be, you know, as early as, you know, late afternoon, four or 5 p.m. across the triangle, or maybe even as late as six, 7 p.m. across the triangle. But by mid, by mid evening, the line should the, the 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 line should be moving across the I-95 corridor and exiting central North Carolina by late evening. All right, so there's the timing for you. I thought I'd share um, with with um, you know a holiday weekend and you know potentially some cleanup activities from all the wind you know potential wind damage on Saturday. I wanted to to share with you um, what kind of weather we're expecting for this weekend after we get through tomorrow. And t Saturday looks like it's gonna be breezy and, if, and passing showers. Uh, we're not expecting severe weather on Saturday. We are expecting a, 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 a you know, nearly certain chance for rain, but it'll be mostly shower activity and, and nothing severe. It will be breezy, so, so be careful with uh, any type of cleanup activities or just any outdoor activities in general. And finally, by Sunday, it should be pretty nice, still a little breezy. Uh, highs around 70. All right, so let's wrap this up and I'll get to everybody's questions here. Um, confidence is, is pretty decent, moderate to high for this event. 
Friday morning through Friday evening is the period that you know we're most concerned about. And just summarizing, damaging winds area wide, heavy rainfall one to two inches locally higher will bring a threat of fl flash flooding, particularly in urban and low lying areas, the usual places that flood with slow moving heavy downpours. Uh, there will be a few tornadoes possible, probably even you know one or two expected to be embedded within that line. Um, anywhere across central North Carolina, that's possible. And quarter size or larger hail is possible as well. So um, that wraps up. Let me also just uh, encourage folks to share our safety messages that we're putting out as well. Be sure to uh, uh, re, you know share and retweet any of our social media safety graphics that we're putting out. Okay, so that wraps up the um, briefing, our 3.30 briefing for Friday's severe weather. This will probably more than likely be our only webinar uh, for this event, but we'll have a new fresh set of slides out by tomorrow morning before sunrise. We'll update these slides. I'll email these slides here as soon as we disconnect. Okay, so that wraps up the briefing for Friday's Severe.